Petit Pas was regarded, by the way, as a propagandist of character dance. It seems to me that these so-called character dances, that is, dramatized dances, which Petit Pas staged, had little in common with the real national dances of this or that people. It is not national dances that led Petit Pas into character dance, but classical ballet, of which he was a devotee. In that way, even Petit Pas' character dances were not so outwardly dazzling or spectacular, or they could have been truly considered to be classical variations upon one national theme or another, rather than a national dances, even if in a purely theatrical sense. It became clear to me that classical exercise is not enough to instill to the artists the technical skills necessary for character dance. I was convinced that exercise of character dance had to include elements of the national dances used in our practical work. We looked through all the available literature and pictures, but we paid most attention to the national dance and its actual live performance and the possibilities in its native land. Shirayev's systematic study of national dances allowed him to define more precisely and vividly the national character and color of one nation or another in performances. Like a comic stage hero, Shirayev continued to give over all of his free time to the fascinating world of cinematography. And the more filming he did, the more the possibilities of the camera became apparent to him. While experimenting with filming frame by frame, should I have realized the significance of each individual frame for the communication of the combined movements that had been passing in front of his lens? He thus came into the realization, and thence into the practical application, of one of the simplest yet impressive special effects of cinema.
In any animation, the most difficult thing is giving life to the character. It is vital for the animator to show every stage of every movement. Only then can his animated hero seem to behave in a natural way. Shiraev drew the characters of this dance himself. But how? We tried an experiment. We assumed as a basis the filming of one of Kitri's variations from the ballet Don Quixote, in which Yekaterina Maximova performed and copied each frame in a drawing. And then we took down each of these drawings into a separate frame. With this technology, animation conveys very precisely the individual peculiarities and style of a dance. Moreover, it is possible to see in drawings of a ballerina those elusive subtleties and details of a performance which can scarcely be reproduced in even the wildest fantasies of the animator. It was possibly in exactly this way that Shiraev achieved such accuracy in conveying the movements of the characters of his animations. The perfection of his animations erased the border between the living and the lifeless. His puppets looked like absolutely real people.
It is even more challenging to do animation with several characters, simultaneously performing different movements. But even this wasn't enough for Shiraev. He turned to the combination of drawn, illustrated, and puppet animation in his film. <laughs> 